Hi, this is Marvelyn Brown with Inner Word Business Services, where we help online marketers get results. So today we're going to take a look at getting organized and how that's going to help your online business. So um, some of the interesting statistics that I've seen recently indicate that there's a high number of people who start an online business and for whatever reason, they're not able to make any more than about $100 a month. Um, you know, it's it the information that I've gathered and I've kind of looked all over the web and the numbers are pretty consistent and the, the news is kind of bleak when you think about the fact that the majority, um, up to 97% of people that start an online business, um, you know, aren't making any more than about $100 a month, if that. Some people aren't making anything. And so... I decided to do a series on planning because I think that that is an area that really needs to be addressed. You know, if you don't have a plan, what do they say? If you um, fail to plan, you can plan to fail. And that is so true. Um, if you don't have any strategy or you haven't given any thought to how you're going to make money, how can you expect to make money? I mean, you don't just go out there and flail yourself all over the place and expect to make money. So I think that a lot of times when people start an online business, they don't know what to do. The other thing is they don't know where to start. They don't know what to do. And a lot of people are hesitant because the cost um, to start an online business is so low. You can start a blog or a website, you know, for less than $20. However, everyone doesn't come equipped with all the information and all of the knowledge they need to run a business and it's not that people aren't capable it's that they're not seemingly not seeking um, training um, help with planning strategy you know mark how to sell products and services online you know selling products and services online is a little bit different <clears throat> than having a brick and mortar establishment. They're a little different in terms of how you approach your um, ideal customers. Some people aren't even thinking about their ideal customers. All they're thinking about is they have a product and they just put it out there and whoever wants it can get it. But when you have that kind of thought process, you know, that could explain some of the, um, you know, dismal sales figures. So what we're going to do today is look at planning. We're going to look at some things that we can do to help you get organized if you're not already. And even if you are organized, this is really a good video to watch because you might get some ideas. I know, you know, sometimes when I watch videos, um, I think I go into the video thinking that I know everything. And then at the end of the video, I realize just how much I didn't know. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about getting organized and how that's going to help you. So the thing that you want to do, you know, a lot of times when you're starting out, you have stuff everywhere. You have a piece of paper here, a, a sheet of paper over in the corner. You may have something stuck down in your pocketbook or your briefcase. You may have uh, papers that you've stacked up, you know, in a file cabinet somewhere, but you really don't know what it is. So, you know, we all kind of tend to have data scattered all over the place. And so what you want to do is turn that unorganized data into meaningful information. So, for example, I use um, Google Analytics. Now, that's a free tool that you can get to track your uh, blog or your website uh, metrics or your numbers. So Google Analytics is going to tell you things like how many people came to your website, what they looked at, what they clicked on. Um, you'll find where they, um, for example, I have a, um, an email newsletter. So I have Google Analytics um, hooked up with MailChimp and then MailChimp will send data through Google Analytics to let me know how many people clicked on my campaign, how many opened it, how many uh, looked at a specific article or piece of content that I put in there. So Google Analytics is a really good way for you to know what's going on 
if you have um, an online business, a blog, a website, an e-commerce site, etc. Um, Traffic Travis is another free tool that I utilize to analyze keywords. So when I'm writing a blog post or when I'm creating content, I use um, Traffic Travis to analyze um, the keywords and also to gather SEO data regarding my website. So that way I kind of know how I rank in terms of all of my competitors and how the um, search engines have indexed my site. The other thing that you want to do is you want to create a budget and you want to run uh, regular financial reports that tell you, you know, how many sales you're getting, how many people are buying your ebook, how many people are, um, you know, clicking on your affiliate links, how many people have joined your network marketing organization. You also want to know how much money you're spending on, um, you know, things like supplies, advertising, you know, all those Facebook ads, all that stuff can really add up. So you want to make sure that you're keeping um, a handle on your budget. So you want to run regular reports. And then, you know, these are the things, the things from here down are really benefits that you're going to get when you start looking at your data and you start analyzing it and turning it into useful information. So you can make better decisions based on facts versus your emotions. You don't want to make a decision based on a hunch or based on how you're feeling or I feel that we're doing really well, but how do you know? You know, you need data, you need information that will back up anything that you might be thinking because a lot of times we make assumptions and those assumptions can be very, very wrong. So, and that's in a good way or a bad way. We can think things are going really well when they're really not and vice versa. Um, it can also help you to understand your progress. So you have a report that you ran this time uh, last month. You can look at that report and say, okay, last month we did this, you know, this month, this is where we're at. And so we've made progress or we're going backwards because last month, you know, this is what was going on and these, this is our results and this month we're doing worse. So you can kind of figure out what it was that made you do worse. And those are the kinds of, of things that you wanna know so that you can make great decisions. You also wanna get a clear picture of what works and what doesn't. So for example, if you launched a campaign last month um, and what I do when I post, say for instance, I do a post. Um, I go out on the day that I did the post, I will go out and look at my Google Analytics data for that day to see what effect that blog post had on my numbers. So did that result in a spike in my numbers? Did people click on the article and drive my traffic up? Did they, you know, take action on what I asked them to take action on? Did I get more downloads that day? Did I get more sales that day? And then, you know, you also want to know where people are going on your website. What are they clicking on, you know, for the most part? Is it a particular category? Is it a particular blog post? Or is it a piece of content that they really like? Find out what your users like and what they don't like. And then the things that they don't like, you can take action to try to improve those things. So these are just some of the things that you can do in terms of, um, you know, having data that's meaningful versus just having pieces of paper scattered all over the place and you really don't know what's going on. So basically when you are organized, it's gonna enable you, especially if you have data online, you wanna gather that data and take a regular snapshot of where you are from you know, one date or one week or one month to the next. And then you wanna also document changes. So, um, and I'll probably do another video or part two or whatever on Google Analytics just because it's such a great tool and it will show you, it gives you the ability, number one, to run reports. You can even program it so that it will run a report, that same report, every month and email it to you. 
Um, the other thing that you can do with um, Google Analytics, and I don't know if they're going to be making some changes soon, they get rid of different functions, you know, at different times. So, but today you have the ability to create an annotation. So say for instance, if I run a marketing campaign today, I can put an annotation into Google um, Analytics and then run that campaign and see you know, if my campaign really had a great effect or a not so great effect on my numbers. So those are the things that you want to do. And then you also want to document if there are any, um, you know, unusual things that you're doing to um, try to maybe, you know, generate traffic or maybe you um, implemented a new capture page or you have um, a new opt-in that you're trying or, you know, there are just a lot of different things that you can do to make your, um, your website more attractive or more user friendly. So when you do those things, you want to definitely make an annotation in your analytics report so that you can see the effects that those things will have on your numbers. So here's some tips to stay organized and informed. So the thing that you also want to do is you want to have all of the great tips and tools and things that different people recommend. You want to, you know, have a place to keep all of that in your memory. And so the way to do that, you can't keep it all upstairs in your head. You've got to have a place where you can organize it and capture it. So I suggest that when you attend a meeting, or you watch a training video or you attend a webinar or whatever that you take notes you know just take notes on the things especially that stand out to you that you want to try um, things that you think will be a good idea for your business things that you want to implement you definitely want to take notes on those things and then what I normally do is um, I will take um, a piece of paper write down my notes and then put it in a binder I like hard copy in some things. Um, I'm not as um, into cloud storage as maybe some other people might be. And so you have to find the thing that works best for you. But I take my notes, I put them in a binder, and then I organize them based on um, subjects. So for example, all the meeting notes are in one area, all the uh, webinars and training sessions are in another area and then what I normally do is if I'm online and I find something that I really like I'll print it off and I'll put those ideas or those things in a separate area so just something to kind of think about do whatever you need to do to help you stay on top of um, the ideas and the information that you collect now you also want to use great tools, tools like Evernote to organize your thoughts. So Evernote will allow you to um, enter text notes. They'll also allow you to enter audio notes. So you can just talk right into your cell phone and put a note into Evernote, save it into a notebook and you're done. Then you can pull that information out um, of your note, you know, your notebook, listen to it, um, make a note of it, do whatever you want to do with it. So Evernote is really, um, it's my lifesaver when it comes to organizing my thoughts. You can also create cheat sheets. So for something that you use on a regular basis, create, um, you know, crib notes, cheat sheets, whatever you want to call them. Um, with Microsoft Word and Microsoft Publisher has some great uh, features as well and you can post them in various places so for me I don't necessarily post them I uh, laminate them and put them a hole punch them three hole punch them and stick them in a binder and this is kind of a, a small like one inch binder that I use when I create content so that way when I'm for example if I'm doing a blog post and I need a headline I don't want to have to sit and think about my headline for a half an hour I have um, headline templates that I use and then I just kind of fill in the blank so those are time savers for me those are things that help me stay organized um, and things that you know make my life easier and enables me to get more done in less time the other thing you want to think about is storage so do you want your items on a, a physical shelf or do you want to use cloud storage or do you want both so those are some things that you want to think about as well where are you going to put all of those handwritten notes 
cards, brochures, etc. Um, where are you going to keep all of that? Are you going to scan it in? You can scan it in using your scanner and then upload it to your storage or you can print it out or if it's already in print copy put a hole in it, three hole punch it and stick it in a binder. So those are things that you need to think about to help you stay organized and informed. The other thing you want to do is you want to keep now I wouldn't recommend putting your financial data in cloud storage that's just me but um, I would keep my financial data in a secure place so but you want to have the data that you can look at and you can see and you can analyze and that data is really going to be helpful in getting your business to the next level if you don't have good information to base your decisions on you're going to be making a bunch of bad decisions bad decisions lead to business failure and all kinds of other problems so you know you want to um, try to get as much information organize it and utilize it to make um, great decisions so here is a list of a few supplies that you can get to help you stay organized and you want to get the supplies that, are, that will coincide with the way that you want to um, organize yourself so if you like hard copy things then you probably want to go with more of this stuff if you want to do everything in the cloud then you may not need some of these things um, you can also organize things in folders in places like with your cloud storage you can create folders um, if you use something like Google Docs or Google Sheets, you can create folders there as well. So you can do the same thing in the cloud that you can do uh, with a physical hard copy item. For me, it just makes it a lot easier to go pull a binder off of the shelf and flip through the pages versus going into cloud storage and you know doing it that way but whatever works best for you so for me I have Avery binders um, in the one to three inch category I have folders with pouches that also have the three hole punch going down the middle I have a three hole punch that I can use to punch holes in any paper that doesn't have a hole I also have um, a hard copy journal and I use Evernote to jot down ideas. I use Google Calendar for um, you know appointments, meetings, webinars, things like that. And then I also use a hard copy calendar with daily and monthly pages for my editorial calendar. So I have an editorial calendar that I use for my blog and I use that hard copy calendar for that. Um, the other thing that I have is um, shelves. So I bought shelves to, to go into my walk-in closet so that I will be able to put my binders, you know, organize them and stick them on the shelf. Um, I also use a scanner to scan documents in um, to keep them, you know, in electronic format or I also print off, you know, certain documents and certain reports and have them in hard copy. Label makers also come in handy to organize and label things like baskets and you know um, they have all kinds of little creative storage solutions based on you know the amount of space you have available and the things that you want to do um, so label makers are a good thing to have and then a laminator or laminating pouches I use a laminator for things like cheat sheets um, infographics that are really useful for me I laminate them put the hole punch and you want to get a hole punch that is strong enough to go through lamination material so I laminate the things that I use on a regular basis and I stick them in a, in a, uh, a binder so those are some of the things that I use you find the system that works best for you but by all means get organized um, to learn more about planning and organizational tools please visit me at innerwordservices.com forward slash productivity thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day